Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has agreed to send officials to Washington to discuss alternatives to a ground invasion in Gaza, in Gaza's southern city of Rafa. Netanyahu canceled the visit earlier this week after the U.S. abstained from a U.N. Security Council ceasefire vote. Well, last night, President Biden renewed his call for a two-state solution between Israel and Palestinians during a campaign event in New York City. So for more on this, let's bring in Vedant Patel. He's the principal deputy spokesperson for the United States State Department. Uh, Mr. Patel, always good to have you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So when will this visit happen and who's expected to attend? So uh, I'll leave it to the to the government of Israel to speak uh, specifically to the delegation on their side. I don't have a schedule or uh, U.S. participation to uh, provide yet, and we're going to continue to have the, having these conversations with the government of Israel. I think, uh, as we've been very clear, uh, we think it's so important for this conversation to happen because uh, we think it's critical that there be a plan in place when it comes to uh, a potential military operation in Rafah. You have to. Uh, remember, you've heard me say this before, that in Rafa, uh, we are talking about more than a million people seeking refuge. It is a region uh, that is a conduit for the flow of humanitarian aid into Gaza and continues to be where foreign nationals are able to depart safely. Um, so that's why it's critical we have a plan in place. You know, Palestinian health authorities have now said that 12 people drowned this week trying to reach air aid that was uh, dropped off near a Gaza beach. When will the temporary port that Biden announced during his State of the Union address be up and running? Well, we hope as soon as possible. Uh, we know that uh, important work has been happening to consult with uh, regional partners on this getting uh, completed as soon as possible. And the Department of Defense here uh, in the United States has been leading on that effort, and we're going to continue to engage with appropriate partners to get that across the finish line. Uh, we think that this can be an important conduit for humanitarian aid. We need to explore all options, and these should be viewed as supplemental to land route uh, avenues for delivering humanitarian aid into Gaza. As you know, a former State Department employee publicly resigned this week over the United States' response to the war. Uh, what's the reaction from within the State Department, and is there concern that more government employees could follow suit? In other words, uh, the United States State Department is there as the principal uh, diplomacy arm of the United States govern, a government, an extension, in fact, of President Biden's uh, policies and his will. Uh, but if you have people that are sort of publicly condemning uh, the efforts at the State Department, such as they exist, um, some saying that it's not enough, what does that mean for just morale within the department? So let me let me say a couple things there. First, uh, we uh, appreciate uh, everyone's point of view, and everyone is entitled to their own point of view when it comes to a particular policy. Uh, I will also note that this is a secretary, um, Secretary Blinken, who uh, appreciates uh, differing and opposing points of view. He's a secretary who has immense respect for the dissent channel cable, uh, an avenue in which uh, employees across the department are able to share um, different points of view. Uh, and those help inform the processes that are undertaken to determine policy and determine our approach, not just when it comes to uh, the current conflict in Gaza, but the varying um, foreign policy issues that we deal on a daily basis. Uh, but ultimately, the policy is determined by uh, the President of the United States, and everyone is going to have to make their uh, own individual determination uh, on their points of view. Um, we're going to continue to remain focused on doing everything we can for this conflict to end. Uh, work has been happening around the clock since October 7th uh, for that to happen. Uh, we believe that we uh, need to support Israel and its efforts to uh, defeat Hamas, but we also need to ensure that every possible step is taken to minimize the impact on civilians and minimize civilian casualties. We also believe that we need to uncover every stone possible when it comes to the delivery of humanitarian aid into Gaza, and we'll continue to work those lines of efforts. Mr. Patel, also want to ask you about the war in Ukraine, because Russian President Vladimir Putin just this week said if the West supplies F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine, they will be shot down. What would the U.S. do if that were to happen? 
So look, I'm not going to get ahead of uh, the process here or speak to hypotheticals. We have had a very clear track record of supporting our Ukrainian partners and equipping them with uh, the appropriate amount of uh, military assets. Uh, we've spoken to uh, uh, the training that's been underway as it relates to F-16s before. Uh, but quite clearly, President Putin could end this uh, war yesterday. All he needs to do is depart Ukraine, ask his army to leave Ukraine, and turn back the territories um, that uh, Russia has unlawfully and illegally uh, taken from our Ukrainian partners. It's as simple as that. Uh, before we let you go, let me ask you about this. Uh, the United Nations Human Rights Office reported on Thursday that gang violence in Haiti has killed over 1,500 people so far this year. Uh, what's your response to the critics who say the United States isn't doing enough to help Haiti uh, or help the American citizens that are there trying to leave? And what is, if there is any plan, in place to uh, help Haiti find its way out of this horrific situation that Haitians find themselves in? The security situation in Haiti is absolutely untenable, and we need to do everything we can to get that back on track. Um, we have spent uh, weeks now engaging with uh, the people of Haiti and Haitian stakeholders to pull together a transitional presidential council that can take on the very important task of uh, forming an interim government with an interim prime minister uh, that can work with our partners in Kenya on the deployment of this multinational security support mission um, so that we can help address this security circumstances. And as it relates to American citizens on the ground, our embassy, uh, the State Department continue to be in touch with American citizens seeking out uh, avenues for safe departure. Since March 17th, we have had regular operations either through fixed winged aircraft or helicopters departing American citizens from either Port-au-Prince or Cap Haitian. And we expect that to continue based on the need, based on the demand signal, uh, and based on the desire. And the best thing American citizens can do right now is register with the crisis intake form with our embassy in Port-au-Prince. That's the best way to stay in touch with us on future operations and uh, the best way to get updated information on the security parameters on the ground. Okay, Vedant Patel, thank you. Thanks.